Good day. Thanks for taking a look at my video. I apologize right off the bat here for being such a delinquent person when it comes to recording this video as I haven't recorded it in some time. But uh, for those of you looking for an update, here, here it is. Um, part of the reason it's taken me so long is I've had some uh, lots of uh, computer rebuilding work going on and of course during the process of recording things I decided to completely and utterly dump my Ubuntu so I had to basically reinstall it and get it all working and <clears throat> a lot of fun with that um, lots of funny things funky things I've got installed here but today we're gonna d discuss how to download Ubuntu 12.04 uh, this is the LTS version or long-term support is what LTS stands for uh, some people say it stands for long-term solution. Uh, that's, that's true too, but uh, you know, like I always say, if solutions work, they don't require support. The, the main thing about LTS is it's for support. Uh, it's designed, again, as a long-term version. Um, if you're not familiar, Ubuntu's regular releases are generally only good for 18 months. It's, in the general operational sense, it's a very short cycle. Um, however, if you're using a desktop PC, you may be used to refreshing your computer once a year or within that cycle frame. So it's not the end of the world. Um, and given the things that are happening in the Ubuntu world today, uh, today and in the GNU Linux world in general, um, you know, updating frequently isn't such a bad thing because you get to check out the newest and latest and greatest stuff. But regardless of all that, um, for those of you that aren't familiar with you know, how to go about downloading and acquiring your own version of Ubuntu or just confused by all the multitude of options. We're going to walk through some of those here today, hopefully within the next couple minutes. Now, if we go to the website, as we can see up here, Ubuntu.com, and this is the web page it's currently generating today. Um, uh, this video is being recorded actually in late September. 12.10 uh, is going to be coming out very shortly, so it's kind of pointless to put this out here. But, but since this is a long term version, I'm going to put it up here so that you can download it for posterity purposes. And then, of course, right on the main page, there's a link right here that says to go take you to the download page. Or you can use from the top bar here on the, on the Ubuntu.com website, you can click on that whichever one works for you go ahead click on that and that'll take you to the download page here as you can see now <clears throat> depending on which version you want you should select up here immediately you don't necessarily have to and it describes a little bit of detail right off the bat as to which three ways you're looking for it now what's worth mentioning here is if you notice right here it says looking for an easy way to install on Windows check out the Windows installer now, this doesn't actually get you a copy of, uh, of Ubuntu to download and then, say, burn it to a CD or install it to a USB stick like we're going to do or anything of that nature. This is actually the WUBI installer, W-U-B-I, or what stands for uh, the Windows Ubuntu uh, Basic Installer. What this does is it actually... Uh, creates a file on the uh, Windows desktop on one of the hard disks on, uh, on your Windows system P creates a file that it then uses as a disk partition or a virtual disk partition if you will to install Ubuntu in it and then sets up Ubuntu to dual boot so it's not a true install or a true dual booting installation but it's it's very quick it's very easy and for the most part it does work do expect to see some kind of uh, possible issues with hardware or just trying to do things like sharing things between Windows and Ubuntu because of this method of installation it can be a little tricky if you do a true dual boot then of course you have should have no problems whatsoever so most people recommend that you avoid the Abubi installer or the Windows installer as they call it uh, and just download the thing itself now if we were you to do to install a server version or wanted the server version now keep in mind the server versions has uh, a better kernel as far as hardware support is concerned for for more um, server related type hardwares um, bigger motherboards multiple CPUs um, different types of disk arrays and structures that you might be using in a server environment uh, versus on a regular desktop so there's a few differences there so if you if you're going to be doing server related stuff it's probably recommended to do this the other thing to keep in mind with the server version versus the desktop is by default server does not install a GUI it simply installs you to a terminal 
um, which can be a little daunting for the first time user. So, you know, you, you can install the desktop if you want, um, but our recommendation is, is unless you need the kernel features specifically or the hardware specific features for Ubuntu server, you should avoid this one. Um, and then the third option that they provide for us here is the cloud infrastructure, which is just simply a way of downloading an install tool that will then install it directly onto your hardware for you. Um, so again, it's using Ubuntu server, but it's also inclu including a bunch of cloud-based stuff, which if you're doing stuff for cloud, I guess might be important. Um, I'm not a person or a fan who believes in the cloud. <coughs> I, I think it's uh, something that's going to die a horrible death in a few years. But regardless, um, if this is what you're, you you want to use it for, and you're you know obviously you're building into cloud infrastructure, this is where you would download it here. But for now, we're going to assume that you're downloading the Ubuntu desktop, and so we're going to click on this link here and download it in a second. But let's scroll down here a little bit, and you can see here that Ubuntu even has a thing for saying, hey. There's Ubuntu Chinese, and it shows you the same kind of things that you can download um, specifically for the Chinese market, which is kind of cool. If you want to upgrade, if you have an existing Ubuntu and you just want to upgrade, here's a guide. It'll take you to the, the, up, the official update upgrade guide so you can upgrade. It's never recommended to upgrade. Many people do it just to test it but it's always best to install fresh. Uh, you don't run into any kind of problems that you run into multitudes of issues with regards to doing upgrades. Um, nothing really specific that I could say on that. Um, it's one of those things you'll find that certain things work well, other things don't work well. So without further ado, let's carry on here and we'll go to the Ubuntu desktop. So here we go, the Ubuntu desktop 12.04 LTS. Ask us, well, do we want to install it? And we can say, sure. Let's go ahead and download it. If we need to get instructions on how to install, we'll click on that in a second here. But first, we're going to start the download. Choose your flavor. You can choose either the 32 bit or, which is recommended, the 64 bit. The reason the 32 bit is recommended is because the 32 bit will work on any machine. If you download the 64 bit version, you need to have a true 64 bit CPU. Whether it's an AMD, an Intel, does not matter. As long as it's a 64, true 64-bit CPU um, and your motherboard is obviously supporting motherboard, you can download the 64-bit version and have it work, which is what we're going to do here. Okay, now, as we can see here, because we have scripting turned off, it didn't update our selection, so we're going to just say, yeah, Ubuntu can run scripts here. And then we're going to... Uh, switch to 64-bit again and it still just doesn't want to change so let's update the page let's see what we can just do a refresh of the page we may have to uh, actually allow more scripting this is something you probably would never have to worry about running into um, but I'm doing it because I'm just just not I don't normally allow scripts to run free on a website unless I know the website and I'm, I'm happy with it. But in most cases, you wouldn't run into that issue. So you just basically would select the 64-bit, and we'll go ahead and click Starting Download. And now it says, okay, great. Thanks for downloading Ubuntu Desktop. Your download should start on a Mac. If it doesn't, click on that link right there, Download Now, and it'll then go ahead and do what you want. If everything goes successfully, you'll be greeted with a requester like this that tells you you are downloading Ubuntu 12.04.1-desktop-amd64.iso. Again, do not worry that it says AMD64. That will work fine on Intel 64-bit processor just as well. Tells you where you're downloading it from. Now, the website's kind of funny, but uh, yeah, that's where we're downloading it from. And then it says, do we want Firefox, because we're using Firefox to download from the website, to open it in Firefox <laughs> or open with some tool that we can pick or just save the file? And because it's an ISO, we're just going to say save the file. We don't really want to open it. Um, so once we've done that, that'll start the downloading process and away it goes. So you can see here, it's downloading at a pretty good clip for me here and it will be done in about seven minutes. So that's pretty much all there is to downloading Ubuntu. Um, now, 
my video today. I hope you were able to follow this through. If you have any questions or thought I just babble too much, you know, please leave a comment below. Uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have if I could not answer your question or if you encounter a problem or an error during the downloading process. Uh, let me know as well and I'll be glad to see what I can do to try and help you out. Take care and have a great one. Bye for now.